There it says, how shall they call on him for forgiveness and salvation and mercy of whom they've not believed? How shall they believe in him if they've never heard of him? How will they know that their sins can be forgiven? How will they know that they can be reconciled to God? How will they know that there's a God in heaven who loves them and wants a relationship with them and wants to give them eternal life if they've never heard the gospel? And how shall they hear the gospel without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they're sent? We're sent. We've been sent into this community to share the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Listen, God didn't send someone else to proclaim the gospel to people in our community. There's not someone else doing it. There's not someone else taking care of that. He's called us to do that. He sent us. And if we're not faithful to go, people will not hear the good news that their sins can be forgiven. Uh, another verse for you. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 16. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 16. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 16. Listen to what Paul says about preaching the gospel. <clears throat> he says, For I preach the gospel. For if I preach the gospel, I have nothing to boast of. For necessity is laid upon me. Yes, woe is me if I do not preach the gospel. Paul says, if I, if I preach the gospel, I've got nothing to boast of. It's not like I say, hey, hey, I'm out there preaching the gospel, like I'm doing something exceptional. No, he says, no, necessity is laid upon me. This is a necessity that God has just laid upon me. I, did, I don't really have a choice. He gave me the great commission. He told me to go preach the gospel. I'm just doing what God told me to do. I'm just obeying his command to me to go and preach the gospel in the world and I'm just obeying him. It's a necessity that's just been laid upon me, he says. I'm, I'm not doing anything extraordinary. I'm just walking in obedience to the Lord. And he says, woe is me if I don't preach the gospel. Because that means I'm walking in disobedience to the Lord. Now, look at our passage again. Look at verse 19. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So Mark's gospel says, go preach the gospel. Luke's gospel says, uh, repentance and forgiveness of sins should also be preached with that. And then Matthew's account says, and go baptize them. And Matthew doesn't mention preaching the gospel or preaching uh, repentance. He doesn't say anything about the gospel here. He mentions baptism. Why is that? A person who hears the gospel message and obeys the gospel message and receives Jesus Christ, repents of their sins, receives Jesus Christ, will be baptized. Baptism is the way a believer publicly identifies with Jesus Christ. And, and through baptism, they're illustrating the gospel message. They're illustrating the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And they're identifying with his death, burial, and resurrection. So baptism is a public confession. It's a public identification with the gospel message. And so if a person hears the gospel and they're converted to Jesus Christ, they'll be baptized at their first opportunity. And every believer, of course, is called to be baptized and should do so out of obedience. And so when you go into the book of Acts, we don't have time to go through the verses here. But just for example, uh, in Acts chapter two, Peter, when he preached on Pentecost, he said, repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. He was not saying that baptism remits your sins or is the way that your sins are forgiven. We're not saved by baptism. We're saved by grace through faith. But in the book of Acts, repentance and faith in Christ is preached together with a call to baptism. 
Baptism occurs immediately upon conversion or at the first possible opportunity. So if you're a believer here in Jesus Christ and you have not been baptized, well, why not? You, you should be. And you should be baptized the next time we have a baptism. Now he goes on in verse 20, teaching them. This is also part of the Great Commission. So it's not just preaching the gospel, getting them saved, baptizing them, and then we're done. No, now there's this process of teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. So the Great Commission includes preaching the gospel, calling people to repentance for the forgiveness of their sins, calling people to saving faith in Jesus Christ, baptizing them, and then teaching people to observe all things that Jesus has commanded so, so they will know how they should live. And this is our mission as believers. This, all, all, of these, all of these elements are part of the Great Commission teaching new disciples the word of God so they can know uh, what to observe and the commandments of Jesus Christ and, and how to live a life that, that pleases God, right? Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Well, how do we know what the commandments are? Somebody needs to teach us. Somebody needs to take us through the word of God so that we know what the commandments mean and what they say and how we, we live it out 